This question shows a diagram of a water wave. You can see here the y-axis is the height in centimetres and the x-axis is the distance in centimetres. And I think when you see um, a diagram like this, it's really important to think about, firstly, what is it telling you? So the first thing I can see here is that we've got one wave just here. We've got another wave here. And then we've got another bit of a wave just here. So we've got just over one and a, two and a half waves there in that diagram. And that might be asked of us in one of the questions. The other thing to look at is that the wave goes up to two centimetres in height and then back down to, to minus two at the bottom here and then there's that midpoint. So the first question says the amplitude of the wave is, and we know that the amplitude is this height here from the zero position to the maximum. So the answer is going to be B, two centimetres. And then it asks us the wavelength of the wave is, and this is why it's so important you're able to identify what one wave looks like. And so we can see the wave starts here at zero and goes all the way to eight. So our wavelength is C, eight centimetres. The next question says, describe one difference between transverse and longitudinal waves and draw a label diagram to help you answer. So whenever it says to draw a label diagram, you must do it because it's much more likely you're gonna get the marks. You know, good label diagrams get the marks easily. So the first thing that we might draw is a transverse wave and we've got to label that so the examiner knows that we know the difference. And then the other one we can draw is our longitudinal wave. And so here we've got a series of compressions and rarefractions. It's a little bit more tricky to draw, but as long as you've got some compressions really bunched up together, then we can just put a few of the wave fronts in here. And it doesn't matter too much about how neat it is. You know, you can clearly see we've got some compressions and we've got some rarefractions. Now we've got to identify a difference. And the most important difference about trans transverse and longitudinal waves is that the vibrations for a transverse wave are perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer. So we can simply label the vibrations and then the energy transfer. And then just to really prove that point, we can put in there that symbol for 90 degrees and then we've got the symbol showing that we've got vibrations at 90 degrees to the direction of energy transfer and then we're going to do the same for the longitudinal waves so here we've got the vibrations and they're going parallel to the direction of the energy transfer and a simple label diagram like that can get you all three of the marks the next question says, state two properties that are the same for all electromagnetic waves. Now, the first one that springs to mind is this, is that they all travel the same speed. And that is the speed of light, 300 million meters per second. And then the next question, you know, you've got to think, well, what else could it be? Well, electromagnetic waves, they're all light. And so you can just simply state that they are all transverse waves. Next question. Some types of waves are used in hospitals. A scanner uses one type of wave to check for broken bones. The type of wave emitted by the scanner is, and it's such an easy question, we're all familiar with x-rays, most of us have had one at some point or another, and this is used to take photographs of the inside of our body and our bones. It says here that the image of the bone is seen because the waves in the scanner are. Now we've got to think, is it absorbed by the bone, reflected by the bone, refracted by the bone, or transmitted by the bone? It can't be transmitted by the bone because it's transmitted by the flesh, which is why the x-rays move through the body, through the flesh and the muscles, and hit the screen and turn the x-ray photograph black. And so some of the light is not getting to the x-ray um, image 
and it's therefore it's not developing and you're getting this clear pattern here where the bones are. Now, you know, I think this is the difficulty in deciding is it absorbed, reflected or refracted? Well, X-rays are incredibly high energy and so not many things are going to be able to reflect them or refract them. You have to have a very, very dense material like a metal, perhaps only the densest of metals might be able to cause some reflection or refraction. But they are absorbed by bones because bones are dense enough for them to be absorbed. Name one type of wave that is used in cancer treatment and explain what it does during the treatment. So the type of wave that's used in cancer treatment is gamma radiation and what it does is it destroys cancer cell DNA. And then those cancer cells are no longer able to replicate and this can lead to the cancer tumour shrinking and then either being removed by a surgeon or they just keep on hitting it with radiotherapy until the cancer cell gradually reduces and it's gone and hopefully that patient is saved.